Today we're going to be looking at the most brutal, shocking, creepiest, and most WTF deaths in the GTA series. So in case you feel like some might be missing from this list, I did a part one of this series about four or five months ago. You guys really seem to enjoy that video, so I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And you might be asking yourself why a couple people weren't appearing on in this video. Well, they were likely in the first one I did. But anyways, let's not waste any more time and let's jump straight into it. The first death today is Johnny Klebitz. So Johnny Klebitz was the star of the Grand Theft Auto 4 expansion, The Lost and the Damned. He was the vice president of the Lost MC Motorcycle Club. And he was essentially just a super bad to the bone leader Everyone looked up to him in Grand Theft Auto 4. He was constantly caring for his drug-addicted girlfriend, Ashley, and that seems to be what happened to his downfall in Grand Theft Auto 5. The only scene we see him in is when he confronts Trevor after getting together with Ashley. It seems as if they are addicted to crystal meth, and that's why they hang around Trevor so much, is he is their supplier. And because of that, he gets together with Ashley on occasion. And I think Johnny had had enough of it. Unfortunately, he confronted Trevor at a pretty bad time after hearing about ghosts and one of his old heist partners reappearing in Los Santos. And when Johnny gave him an, a little bit of an attitude, he literally curb stomped him to the ground, like threw a bottle at his face and then decided to curb stomp him with his boot. And the aftermath is absolutely brutal. You can see like the inside of Johnny's brain. There's like a crack in his skull. It's pretty brutal. I remember the first time I saw this, my mouth dropped to the ground. I was like, number one, no way Johnny Klebitz just died. Number two, that was a brutal death and a crazy introduction for our third protagonist, Trevor Phillips. So that's why Johnny's death is going on the list today. It was brutal, shocking, and it ended up changing the Grand Theft Auto series forever with the death of that main major character. Okay, at the number two spot today, we jumped to Grand Theft Auto 4, and that death belongs to Darko Brevich. So this is the man that Nico Bellic spent his entire time in Liberty City trying to find. Darko essentially sold Nico and his fellow squad mates out for around $1,000 for drugs in the war they were fighting in back home, which was the ultimate betrayal. Most of Nico's friends died. He was really the only one who survived. So when he got to Liberty City, he spent the majority of his time tracking him down. Now, you do have an option here. You don't have to kill Darko, but you can. And if you do so, you will enter in one of the most gruesome execution-style animations and cutscenes of all time. Nico will fire 12 rounds into Darko, all for his lost crew members and squad mates. Now, I'm pretty sure the gun he has is like a Desert Eagle, which does not have 12 rounds by default, but Nico puts 12 rounds into him, and that would absolutely destroy a person. And that's what Nico does. I think just raw motion takes over here, and he just straight up executes Darko. And it is one of the most brutal deaths of all time because you have so much emotion built up in Nico, and as a result, all that emotion is transferred over to the player when making that final decision. So that was another pretty brutal death right there, Darko Brevich in GTA 4. All right, staying in Grand Theft Auto 4, however, this time we're jumping to the Ballad of Gay Tony. These next two brutal deaths belong to Tahir and Ahmed. So they are supposed to be business partners with Yusuf Amir, another one of the main characters in the game. However, it's clearly a setup what happens in this mission. And uh, you as Luis Lopez go up there to back up Yusuf Amir because you know it's going to be a setup. And what happens is pretty awesome. So they don't expect you to show up. And when Luis figures out that this is a setup, what he actually does is he throws Amir actually off the side of the Rotterdam Tower without a parachute, and you see him tumble down to the ground, landing on a taxi cab, and it destroys the taxi. Like, it literally crushes the engine. And obviously, he is no longer in his existence because that fall would kill pretty much anything, and it certainly did to him. And then Tahir actually climbs to the very top of the spire of the Rotterdam Tower, where Luis Lopez actually chases him up there and then pushes him off the top. From the highest point of one of the tallest buildings in the game, this guy has to fall to his death 
all the way down. And you just know that that five to seven seconds that you would be in free fall would be one of the most terrifying things of all time. You can't feel bad for these guys because they were trying to set up Yusuf Amir, one of the funniest and coolest guys in the series, but their deaths still remain one of the most brutal. All right, let's jump back to GTA 5, and that brutal death belongs to Deborah. So the wife of Floyd, who is actually one of the port workers in GTA 5, you stay with him as Trevor when you're living in Los Santos trying to find Michael. And she is this really stuck up person who doesn't like swear words and uh, is just super uptight. And she gets on the wrong side of Trevor. And what happens is during an interaction, Deborah actually goes and gets a gun which is very uncommon of her. And she's pointing it at Floyd. She's pointing it at Trevor. And this eventually leads to an interaction that we don't even see. It looks like Trevor is approaching Deborah, and then the screen turns black. Now, when that happens, we see Trevor quietly leaving the apartment and he is bloodied from head to toe. And he is exhausted. There are blood stains on his shirt, on his shoes, uh, on his shorts, in his hair. And then what's very interesting is Wade asks, did you meet Deborah?" And Wade actually wants to go inside and say hi. And then Trevor says, I wouldn't. Uh, so you can definitely tell that it is not a good scene up there. And then it pans to the window where there are blood marks and bullet holes everywhere. So some sort of massacre went down in there. And that is the last we see of Deborah. She appears in one mission and one mission only, and she apparently is absolutely slaughtered by Trevor. One of the most brutal deaths we don't get to see, but you can just kind of tell how bad it got in there. Jumping back to Grand Theft Auto 4, this next brutal death belongs to a character known as Chubby Charlie. So this takes place in the mission Trespass, where you as Nico essentially have to run through an abandoned factory, and you're looking for this guy named Chubby Charlie. Now, he eventually chases you all the way to the roof, where he actually has a helicopter set to get him out alive. Now, when the helicopter ends up coming in, he doesn't get to land enough, so Chubby Charlie has to, like, grab onto the landing gear. And then as you shoot the helicopter, he will actually be go spinning out of control. Chubby Charlie will still be hanging on to the landing gear of the helicopter, and it will crash through the building and then ultimately explode. Could you imagine how fearful that would be? You're grabbing onto a helicopter's landing gear that's flying. It gets shot down, it goes into a tailspin, there's nothing you can do about it, and it crashes into a building and ultimately explodes. That would just be terrifying to me. Again, Chubby Charlie was not exactly a good character, so it's kind of glad that this happened, but still an amazingly brutal death with an epic explosion. All right, so we get two brutal deaths in one in this GTA 4 mission, and it is called Late Checkout. So the first brutal death actually belongs to a diamond dealer named Isaac. You actually get the choice to either spare him or kill him. And if you choose to kill Isaac with a pistol or a handgun, you get this brutal execution style cutscene where you just, you know, pop him in the head and then boom, he flies back and blood goes everywhere on Nico. So that's the first one right there where you can actually get rid of Isaac. However, the better one in this mission actually occurs on the roof. There's another diamond dealer standing behind a grill with a propane tank. Now, this brutal death is optional. The only way this occurs is if you actually shoot the propane tank on the grill. If you were to just go about it normally and shooting the guy, uh, nothing would happen. However, if you do shoot the propane tank, he'll actually be lit on fire, he'll be thrown off the edge of the building, and he will fall to his death on fire through the air, landing on the ground just splat on the concrete. That has to be a horrible way to go out. Not only are you completely on fire, you've fallen off a building, and you're going to be landing on concrete, which is just going to instantly crush you. So what a brutal way to go. But again, you can't really feel bad for any of these guys because they're, they're all the bad guys in this situation, but still an absolutely crushing, no pun intended, death in GTA 4. All right, and the final death today belongs to Anthony Carrada, who is a character in GTA 4. So he's one of Jimmy Pegorino's guards, and he's actually an undercover agent working for the LCPD. 
and the FIB. Now in this mission, you are tasked to kill Karada, but he's in a hospital and because he's an undercover agent, he is surrounded by heavy police protection. So what Nico has to do is he actually has to get hospital scrubs from one of the locker rooms in a nearby hospital. And then he changes and he heads towards Corrado's ward. Now what he does is he asks the officer to leave and he actually takes Anthony Corrado off of life support. Nico pulls the plug on this guy. And what's crazy is you then see him like squirming around and stuff like that as I would imagine he's obviously can't breathe and then ends up dying. So even though you don't like kill anyone with a gun or no one gets lit on fire here, you literally pulled the plug from someone. Just absolutely brutal, gruesome. It really speaks to the nature of this game, Grand Theft Auto 4, how dark and gritty it was. And this death of Anthony Carrada was just another example of a seriously brutal death in this game. But anyways, that right there is some of the craziest, creepiest, and just most WTF brutal deaths in the Grand Theft Auto series. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. Which one of these did you think was the worst? I think the diamond dealer getting lit on fire and then falling off the building ha definitely has to be one of the worst ways to go. Uh, but like I said, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.